So on Monday, we were invited to HMRC. Mm -hmm. um, many software developers were there in attendance. Yeah. And it was essentially the grand reveal of the um, API strategy. It's, it's yeah. something that we knew was, was coming. We've had some uh, degree of discussion and yeah. um, input into. And um, you know, it's something that the industry has been you know, campaigning for, lobbying for, if, if, if you want for, for many, many, many years. Mm. If you consider the, you know, the tax software at the moment, what does it do? It sends information from mm. the tax software, a tax return to HMRC. It's a one-way process. And through this API strategy, there are opportunities to make it a two-way process. Mm. And um, yeah, it's, it's, it's going to be a good thing for all concerned. So APIs is an application programming interface, so um, like I say, they, they exist already, so it gets uh, software talking to system servers, that, that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. So as I've already said, there's an API for sending tax return data to HMRC, mm -hmm. but what APIs in the future could do is, you know, it, it, it all depends on what what we want them to do. HMRC have, have got, you know, uh, the industry's ear on this at the moment. So. To give an example, let's say you um, you submit a tax return to HMRC, HMRC become aware of your client's liability. It's up to your client to pay that liability. So if, um, if the client doesn't pay the liability by the due date, the, the, the practitioner can, through the software, through an API, can find out which clients have paid, uh, which clients haven't paid, uh, get a list of those clients, they could put that list into mail merge that might have reminder information about how to pay HMRC, how, you know, what the liability is, and send that out as a letter or an email or, or, or something like that. Mm. The, uh, you know, an even more exciting thing, you know, there's, there's um, again, something that could happen, it depends if HMRC build the API, but let's say um, you have a client who has a, a string of properties and an API is built for the property letting agents, for the, for the management agents, to send information from those properties, so income expenses, to that client's digital tax account. Mm. Tax software, because APIs are now a two-way thing, will be able to pull that information back down into uh, the tax software and start populating, maybe, uh, you know, if there's still a, a, you know, a formal tax return design, but start populating land and property pages with that information for the accountant then to uh, sort of finish off and, and apply any tax allowances and, and other tax treatments to things. So, so it's quite a big, you know, the, the possibilities are, are, are quite huge um, in making accounts' lives pro you know, pro probably um, a lot easier. Mm. So, uh, yeah, I mean, that's a really good question because a lot of the systems, yeah, they, have, they are quite old. Uh, what HMRC are looking to do is build a middle layer that these APIs will then use. So it doesn't matter that the, you know, the self-assessment um, you know, database systems technology is quite old. Mm. The fact will be that anything that we work with as a, as a software developer will be uh, basically accessing um, an interface that will be modern. Mm. So far? I think it's going to be good for uh, the industry. Um, there's opportunity there'll be more opportunities for uh, practitioners. I mean, in fact, at the um, Practice Excellence Conference, I'll be able to talk about uh, opportunities that, that uh, practitioners will have, especially with regards to digital tax accounts and the way things might work in the future. Um, I mean, things will, be, things, things will feel different, uh, no doubt, especially if the actual paper return does disappear and it's replaced by data capture. But there's other opportunities to move things into more of a real-time situation as well and give um, sort of real-time uh, almost like tax planning advice. Um, you know, uh, you can you can calculate a, a liability of someone's disposable property or something like that. But this time round, it could well be that the case that um, your client will be able to make payments on account in advance. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, someone having to settle the uh, you know taxes by the thirty first of January. There's yeah. there are there are opportunities. I think something just to, um, uh, to you know to, to, to say on this as well is the fact that there's, as I understand things, practitioners that still want to 
prepare tax information in uh, effectively in arrears like we do at the moment. So the tax year happens and then we prepare the you know the tax return and, and it gets settled at some future date. There's still the opportunity to work that way if that's what practitioners um, want to do. Um, there are opportunities though for submitting information in, in advance in a real-time fashion but they, you know, as I understand it, don't actually have to be pursued at this point in time. Well, I mean, this has just been a, a very short um, little interview. Uh, there is the Practice Excellence Conference where I will be going into a lot more detail where this has come from, how it could benefit practitioners, how you get ready for it, things to think about um, in connection with your clients and getting them ready, even touching on things like GovUK Verify, which will, you know, for, you know, formally identity assurance, that will, you know, has actually happened. Um, and your clients will need to use it. So um, you can talk more about that.